Welcome back everyone to The Crew 2. Now, as you can see, two new Bugattis have come into the game and without any changing of the word, they are changing the game themselves. So we have got the Bugatti La Vittori Noir. Uh, apologies if I'm butchering that name, but it is French, so their language is a fucking nightmare. Now, as you can see, I've already maxed it out with nearly 1,800 horsepower. So it's still, I believe it's still not as powerful as the Magma. Actually, it's more powerful. I have whole 50 horse. Oh, never mind. Forget me then. And to the regular Chiron, at least, that's 1,638. But then there's also this thing. The Type 57 SC Atlantic. And that is going to be next episode, but you know I have to do this. Now, performance, we've already maxed it out. Customization options. Uh, let's just say there's little there's the rims that's it but we can stick vanity items on so let's do that now uh let's put on some good rims uh, uh there's a horrible uh can i have some decent rims please game i'm just gonna skip the rims uh Let's see if the smoke. Oh, that will look quite nice. Nitro, right. Now, it is French, so let's go with a little red and blue action. Underglows, no. Window tints, not unless you're Black Panther. Horn, not really bothered about. And rooftops, you can make it a police edition. Okay. Apart from that, though, there is... Bugger all else you can do with this car. So, let's get on into it. So, here we go. And... Oh, it already sounds so good. But, if you look at it, it just looks so nice. With all the little details and everything it has. So... And by the way, that is a hex exhaust blowing down to your nightmares. Now, the interior is so low. You can barely see anything. But as you can see, that 1800 horsepower certainly has some adverse effects. And the active error on this is beautiful. Okay, that is just dope to the max. Now, I will say this. It is full four-wheel drive. All the little goodies and trimmings. And yet, it doesn't feel as heavy as the other Veyrons. Oh! Cutting that out. Uh, it doesn't feel as heavy as the Veyrons in this game usually do. Like, it's just pulling to 20, to 30, doesn't even have a care in the world. And it's just having a good old time. So, let's put this in possibly the most used hypercar race in the game, because every single hypercar race is about 2,000 minutes long. Apart from this one, and that is Hollywood. So let's bump up the difficulty because there's no point, well, going all wimpy about it. Now, for something with 80, near enough 1800 horsepower at its disposal, it doesn't feel like it wants to kill me. Like, most things like that feel like it wants to kill me. But this, it feels sort of refined and held back. Oh, Lord, it keeps up with them. And they have NOS. Now, don't get, don't get me wrong. 
Is it going to be the fastest round the corner in this game? Hell no. It's a Bugatti. Unless it's the Bolide or whatever that crazy thing is. Oh! That's a great start. Unless it's the Bolide, it's not exactly going to break a cornering record in this game. But right off the bat, it is really struggling. But soon that power kicks in and you say goodbye. Now, with a bit of tuning, could you, like, factor this out? Yes, of course you can. Is it going to be a meta car, though? That I do not know. Maybe for some of the escapes, but certainly where it's concerned with the other parts in this game, certainly not. Like, for the horsepower, it might be able to reach a good top speed. But apart from that, it's it's very pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's well, it's not exactly now, but <laughs> it's very it's such a weird thing with this car. I want to like it. I really want to like it. But the problem is, it's just so heavy. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not as heavy as the other Veyrons, but you can feel its mass and its length. Especially the length, because this thing is so much longer. It's really working against it in a sad way, because it can do better. Like, don't get me wrong, we're nearly 14 seconds ahead of the AI, and this is on ace difficulty, so it's not exactly crap. But it's not the best either, and I think for the price it is in the game, I think it's about 2 million in the game. Like, in the pack, it's 1.6, but outside the pack it's going to be near the two million mark if you're paying that much money for a car in a game like this it has to have something where it's unrivaled i know that's setting high expectations but at least for the time that it's added it make it do something that no other car can beat yet because as horsepower goes it's rivaling koenigseggs here and it's just completely doing its business. But I wonder, where is that stupid long road just north of Florida where I can actually max cars? Because there's a stupid long road where you can just beeline it down the centre of a freeway. Now, this. Okay. Points go already for the coolest reversing light ever of making the Bugatti logo the reversing light. Th that po points, points there. Points there because that right there is just amazing so let's put the foot to the floor go around this escape because i don't want to do that and see what you've got so that's 200 already 230 250 260 still pulling 270 into seventh gear 273, 279, 280, 281, 282, 283, 285. Oh! 285, and it was still pulling. So that is really impressive. And once you get some of the draft on this thing, you are going to get performance like no other so hold on let's go for it again so 250 heading on to a straight 270 into seventh gear lamp post there's 280 now Nah, it hits a wall at 280. And don't get me wrong, that is not slow. That is anything but slow. 
but without any special NOS kits or drafting, 280 is a damn fine target for a car of this mass. But anyway, that is your look at the Bugatti La Noir, whatever it's called. Let's just call it the Bugatti Frenchman. Yes, the Bugatti Frenchman. I've been your host, Mr. Gage. This has been The Crew 2. I will see you in the next episode, whatever it may be. Ow. Whatever it may be. See you in the next episode. Bye.